Hi there, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. And I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. And we are Love to Hate, where we help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at Razzia by 25th Century Games. Razzia is a game that is coming to crowdfunding here in the very near future, along with some other games from 25th Century Games. So make sure to check out the link down below in the description of this video after you watch it to get all the details from the campaign page. Now this game is from designer Reiner Knizia, and this is going to be another one of his auctioning bidding type games. Except this one's got rats and a mafia theme to it. You are going to be trying to uh, collect your members, your gangsters, your drivers, your getaway cards, and all the loot that you can gather, and trying to form the best mob as possible, uh, getting the most points over the course of, of three rounds. But you want to watch out for the police because they could come out at any time and they could end one of those rounds before you know it. Let's go down to the table where I'll show you how this one plays out, and then we'll come back and share thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, I have Razzia on the table. Let me show you guys about this bidding game. Now, what you have here with this one, I do want to make sure you understand, is prototype. So what you see here, the final artwork, components, maybe even some of the rules might change once it's released from crowdfunding. That being said, this is a game that has a scoreboard right here, as well as kind of an area to start off the area that you're going to be auctioning off cards or bidding for cards. Uh, you do have lots of cards in this game. You've got score markers. You've got a cheese grater, which is going to indicate who initiated the auction and you have bidding cards. Uh, that's pretty much it. You do have a player aid here to kind of help you keep track of scoring, what's going to score at the end of a round versus what's going to score at the end of the game. Now, how this game is going to work, uh, all players are going to have a hand of bidding cards. Now, there's 1 through 16 in this game, and depending on how many players you have in the game determines what cards you use, because you may not use all 16 of these cards. But ultimately, all players are going to have a set of four predetermined bidding cards so that it is as uh, equal as possible. Now, obviously, somebody's going to have the highest bidding card, and whoever that is at the start of each round is going to be the player who starts the round. There are going to be three rounds in this game, and players will keep their bidding cards face up in front of them. So maybe I have a hand of something like uh, two, five, and I'm kind of making this up, eight, and let's say maybe 12. Uh, that, that may not be an actual hand of cards that you would ever start the game with, uh, but let's pretend like this is my hand of cards. And this would be face up in front of me uh, as we begin the game. Now, uh, if I am that player who has the highest card, I have a choice to make. I can either flip out a card, putting it out here into the line of cards that are available for the auction, or I can initiate an auction. Now, obviously, there needs to be cards out here for me to do that, but if I were to do that, I would take this cheese grater and we would start an auction, which I'll get back to that here in just a second. The third thing that I could do on my turn is to discard one of my thief cards, and we'll cover that here in just a minute as well. But the first thing I might do, and this is probably what you're going to be doing more often than not in this game, is flipping out a new card from the deck. And we'll put it out here in the, in the market. Now, let me show you what are on these cards. Now, a lot of the cards are going to be trinkets, and they're going to have this icon right here in the top, as well as this icon down here in the bottom, this mug of uh, beer, perhaps, uh, that is going to tell you that you're going to score this type of card at the end of every round, at the end of each of the three rounds. Uh, and so diamond is a type of trinket, but you, we also have pizza slice, art, pocket watch. There are several. This is, this is just an example of four different types. And you want to try to get as many different types of trinkets as you can throughout the course of the game because uh, the more you have, the more points you'll get. And you'll note that if you don't have any at the end of a round, you're actually going to lose five points. So you want to try to get as many as you can, five at least, to try and get 15 points at the end of each round. That's the trinkets. Now, Another type of card that you'll come across in the game are gangsters. Now, gangsters all look the same, and they'll have this brass knuckles icon up here in the top. And again, it's got the beer mug in the bottom, which tells you that it's going to score at the end of every round. You are wanting to try to be the player who has the most gangsters, because if you do, you'll get five points. However, if you have the fewest, you're going to lose two points. 
you want to try to get them in pairs because for each pair that you have, you'll get another five points. So you want to try to get an even number of them to increase how many points you're going to be getting in that round. That's how gangsters work. Drivers and getaway cards. Now, uh, getaway cars, excuse me, not cards. Uh, they are going to give you one point. You'll get one point for each driver and one point for each getaway card. But however, your getaway cards aren't going to score you anything unless you have at least one driver. Uh, because what good is a getaway car without a driver? Uh, and if you haven't figured it out by now, the theme of this game is that you are trying to get uh, gangsters, mobsters, uh, and, and you know, you're running a mob, let's say, of, of rats, and you need these people to be a part of your mob in order to be successful. And so you're, you're getting your getaway car, but if you don't have, if you've not recruited a driver, then what good is the getaway car? That's kind of the idea here. And so that's how these cards score. And again, they have the beer mug down here in the bottom, and that's going to tell you that it scores at the end of every round. Now, these cards are going to be out here in the market, and uh, you'll take turns one by one throughout uh, going around the table, uh, putting cards out here in the market. And whenever you think there's a good arrangement of cards out here, so maybe it's something like this, uh, where you've got, uh, you know, five cards or so maybe, you might decide to initiate an auction. And if you were to do that, then instead of flipping out a new card, you'll take the cheese grater and you'll say, I'm initiating the auction. And whoever has the cheese grater, they're going to be the person who bids last in that auction. Starting with the player to the left of whoever took the cheese grater, they will decide if they want to bid. Taking one of their face-up bidding cards, placing it out in front of them, saying, that's what I'm bidding with. So in other words, I might, if it were me, I might bid five here. And then it would go to the next player in turn order to decide whether or not they want to use one of their bidding cards that is higher than my bidding card. And this would continue around the circle till it gets back to the person with the cheese grater. Now, if the cheese grater person, uh, the one who took the uh, cheese grater, if they initiated the auction and nobody else bid, because you can pass, you can say, I don't want that out there. That's not good for me. I don't want to spend my 12 on this. Uh, then it, if it gets back to the cheese grater person, they have to bid. They have to use one of their cards to bid for this because they initiated the auction. And uh, ultimately, whoever ended up bidding the highest, so let's say that it was an eight, okay, they will take all of these cards, placing them face up in front of them. They'll take their eight card and they'll move it out here where this one card is. They'll leave that eight card face up. Now, this one card will come back to them, but it will come back face down and they won't be able to use this for the rest of the round. So they're only stuck with three cards from now on for the rest of the round. Uh, this one card will become available to them in the next round, uh, being one of their four bidding cards. Uh, and then whoever wins the next auction, they'll take the eight. So you can see how these cards are going to rotate around from the different players. And uh, if you spend one of your high cards uh, not paying attention to what could be out here, you might be trading a 12 for a one. That's not really good. You might want to not do that. Uh, so that's kind of how that bidding uh, aspect works. Now, there are more cards in the game, so let me show you them. These are the cards that are going to score only at the end of the game. You're going to have business cards. Now, business cards are going to have this dollar sign in the top left, and there's going to be, uh, kind of like how with the trinkets, there's going to be some that, that are the same type, like pizzeria, and then there's going to be some that are different, casino, nightclub, movie theater. There are several more in the game. This is just the examples here. Now, what you're trying to do with these business cards is you're trying to get groups that are the same, but you're also trying to get variation because you'll get points for both of those things. For variation, you'll want to try to get as many different types of cards as you can to increase the number of points you, you can get. But then also for groups that are the same, you'll want to try to get at least three, four, or five to try and get five, 10, or 15 points. And again, this is at the end of the game, not at the end of every round, but at the end of the game. Now, the last type of card that's going to give you points in this game, those are going to be thieves. And uh, when you get a thief, you could possibly take the third type of action in the game. Remember, the first type of action is to flip a card out. The second type is to initiate an auction. The third type is to spend one of your thieves. And uh, when you do this, if you have a thief in front of you, you can discard it, putting it in the discard pile to be able to take any one card that's already out here in the market 
or you could steal a card that's already been claimed by another player, uh, the cards that are in front of them. So maybe they have the uh, artwork, the piece of artwork, the trinket that you don't have, and if you could get it, maybe it increases the number of points you'll score at the end of that round. So you want to be clever about when you spend these uh, to increase your sets so that you get more points before the round comes to an end. The other two types of cards that you'll find in the deck are the ones that are going to really kind of mess with everything. The first is going to be the police. Now, when the police show up, you will immediately stop what's happening for that round. So let's say I drew this off the top of the deck and the police came up. You're going to put the police above kind of the market area, keeping track of how many police cards have come out. And an auction is immediately going to be initiated. So you will look and see what's out here in the market. Whoever revealed the police card, they're going to take the cheese grater and you'll you'll start an auction. And it, again, it'll be the person to the left of whoever has the cheese grater will have to decide what they're going to bid, if they're going to bid. And it'll continue to go around the circle. And once it gets back to the person with the cheese grater, because they didn't necessarily choose choose to initiate the auction, they, they just revealed the police card, they don't have to bid. They could pass. Now, I'm, I told you earlier, if they do initiate the auction by taking the cheese grater, then they do have to bid if everyone else passed. But uh, whenever it happens because of the police, that's not the rule. You could choose to pass if you want to. But anyhow, that initiates the auction. A way that the round can come to an end is if seven police cards come out. Once the seventh police card comes out, then that's going to end the round and you'll proceed to end of round scoring. And I'll talk about that here in just one second. But uh, that's kind of what happens with the police. Now, the last final card you might find in the game are police station cards. They're going to go out here in the middle of the auction as well, being another card that you'll gain if you win this lineup of cards. But they're kind of a negative card. You don't want to get these because when you get one, you'll have to discard one of your business cards that you've already gained throughout, that, uh, throughout the game. And so for every police station that you get, you'll have to get rid of one business card. If you don't have any business cards, then you don't have to worry about police stations. They, they don't do anything. Now, uh, I've already explained that when the police show up seven times, that could end the round. But another way the round could end is if all players have used all four of their auction cards, then that's going to end the round. Once you run out of auction cards, you kind of don't play the rest of that round. So you do want to be very wise about how fast you spend your auction cards because you can only win four auctions each round uh, before you're out of the round. So you want to try to stay in the round as long as possible. At the end of the round, you'll go ahead and score up points for trinkets and gangsters, drivers, and getaway cars. And uh, you'll keep track of that here on the board over here. At the end of the third round, you'll do all of that again, but then you'll also score points for your business cards, your thieves, and then you'll look and see what four cards do you have left that you could bid with. You'll add up all the numbers on those four cards. Whoever has the highest cumulative total will get five more points, and whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. That's how you play Razzia. Now let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this one. And we're back, and now we're gonna share our thoughts on Razzia from a gamer and non-gamer's perspective. So Sam, this is a bidding auctioning game, which uh, we've looked at a few of those here on Love to Hate, but it tends to be one that, uh, a type of game that we probably don't spend a whole lot of time yeah. at our table with. Uh, but this one I felt like was pretty straightforward. It wasn't a, a too uh, deep of a concept yeah. here. As is the case with a lot of Reiner Knizia games, they tend to be these elegant, straightforward kind of games. What would you think about this one? I thought it was good. I think the strategy is deceptive a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did not do well in this game, but I think looking back, I would change how I played it a little okay. bit. Okay, yeah. So... What, what was the thing about it that maybe tripped you I up? think the, the strategy that's not talked about, I don't even think we've talked about this, is getting that card that's out there so your next round you have higher cards in your hand. Right. And yeah. the first round, I wasn't paying attention to that. And the second round, I had very low cards in my hand, yeah. which just set me back. And I didn't really think about that until I was like, oh, wait a second. Yeah, like, that, that to me is one of the, the, I think you're right. I think it's like a secret thing about this yeah. game that, that it's not so observant, uh, you know, the first maybe two or three times you play that, and then you start to lean into it and you're like, oh, that really is kind of important yeah. because then it you adds... You have four cards in your hand. Right. And, and it adds to this concept of, you know, 
you really got to be wise about what cards you're actually trying to bid yeah. for because you can only you can only win four auctions each yeah. round at a maximum you might not get all four and then on top of that you don't want to just focus on what's out there but you do want to focus on that yeah. that other bid card that you're going to get if you're but the person kind of who wins. A, but you do want to get you don't want to get crap cards just to get a high card exactly so it's a you kind of have to weigh yeah. the decision. And it hurts. It stings so bad when you trade off like a, a 14 for a 2. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know, like. And so I had really good cards the first round. But uh -huh. I had really low cards in my hand, which set me back the next three rounds. Yeah. I just couldn't seem to get ahead because Lance got so far ahead the second round. Yeah. And so that's one of those things about this game that, that you're paying attention to n numerous things in the game, right? Like you want to make sure that you're trying to compete for the gangsters and you want to make sure that you have at least one trinket so you're not losing points. And then you want to also kind of keep up with the, the business cards too, yeah, right? Yeah, there is a lot to think about. I think that, that it could be slightly overwhelming for some non-gamers well, just because there's a lot to... Every, every category is different. Yeah. And yeah. what you need. You do. You do. Yes. And, and I think the player aids really help out with yeah. that because they're designed. And, and if you watch the rules portion of the video, I show you they're, they've got that what's scored every round versus yeah. what's scored only at the end of the game. And I think that's designed really well. Um, and as you kind of play this game, you'll get used to that aspect of it and and get more familiar with what the the cards do and, and how they get you points. But I just think it's an interesting concept of. Uh, that whole, I, I'm only going to win maybe four auctions each round, and I don't want to trade off a 14 for a two. Yeah. So you got to really kind of balance that out really well with this one. And for a game to be just as simple and as, you know, like an auctioning game, that's all we're doing here. We're flipping out cards and we're auctioning. I think that's a clever way of doing yeah. it. Um, and then you throw in the fact, too, that, you know, you don't have, like, you can you can start the auction at any time. Yeah. That's kind of cool, too, um, because you never know exactly what somebody's going to do. Uh, the police come in. They can end the round prematurely. You get those police station cards out there, and that adds in some negativity yeah. with it, because now you're going to be losing some some uh, business cards. What did you think about that, that uncertainty of the game? Yeah, it? it was a little like you have a plan, but then mm -hmm. it can just be over yeah. like that and that, yeah. that's it so it, it you can't really stick too strong to your plan you have yeah. to be flexible you do and it's and the way i've seen this game play out after playing it several times the first round's going to go for quite a while yeah because you're you're probably going to use up all four of your action uh, auction cards for every player more so than you're likely to get seven police cards out then the second round's not going to be as long because those seven police cards probably will come out. And then in the third round, it's almost guaranteed that you're going to have those seven police cards show up and and in that round early before you get yeah. all the, the cards played. So you kind of, you, you get lulled into this thinking of, oh, I'm going to get lots of stuff. I'm going to play all my cards. I'm going to wait for good stuff to come out there. And in the second and third round, it may not, and it yeah. may not be like that. And I think that's a fun thing about the game. Yeah. So. Uh, one you would recommend playing with non-gamers? Yeah, I think it's a good one. Yeah, I think so too. Um, you might have to kind of go over with them about this way that each yeah. card's type, uh, each type of card scores and what gives you points every round and what gives you only points at the end of the game. But other than that, I think it's a pretty good game that you can easily explain to somebody in maybe five to ten minutes. Yeah. So. The game is Razzia. It's from designer Reiner Knizia and 25th Century Games. And again, it is coming to crowdfunding along with some other games of theirs here in the very near future. So make sure to check out the link down below in the description of this video and leave us some comments while you're down there. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.